Good morning. This morning, I'll be doing a book talk on Mark Rowland's Running with the Pack. Running with the Pack. The Korean book translated Running with the Philosopher. But actually, the original book is Running with the Pack. He's the author of Philosopher and the Wolf. And that book is famous, Mark Rowland's. Uh, let's pray. Father, we're thankful for this morning as we you've answered my prayer for this morning, Lord. And Father, just so thankful. God, you are amazing, God. I give you glory and thanks in Jesus' name. Uh, even yesterday's recording, I sounded depressed because I had a event on Saturday that that I was praying for, fasting for, and God answered my prayer miraculously. So praise the Lord. Um, maybe in 10 years, Lord willing, I'll share what happened. But thank you for your prayer. My unspoken prayer request. You've prayed, many people prayed, and God answered that. Well, this book was written 10 years ago, and finally published in Korean. It was written 2013 by Mark Rollins. Mark Rollins is a, a professor of philosophy and he wrote a book on this book, Philosopher and the Wolf. Let me just briefly introduce that book to you. Through philosophical reflection combined with personal narrative of the 10 plus years period he lived with the wolf name Brennan. Uh, actually, it's not pure wolf. It's mixed with dog. He was he bought a puppy saying that it's wolf, but actually it's a half dog, half wolf. Uh, constructs both a memoir and philosophical journal. Each chapter is packed with personal antidote. For example, the author and friendship picking up girls at rugby parties with Brandon's help and with philosophical exploration range from notions of time, consciousness, and freedom of ideas regarding malice, evil, and death. So as he wrote, philosopher and wolf and made famous, his Englishman from Wales came to America as a philosopher professor, uh, then eventually write a memoir himself as a runner. Because running with pack, he did, he does not run with people. He runs with animals. So he has like five, six dogs and wolves. And this half wolf actually also uh, breeds another um, wolf dog kind and they he started running with them and basically talks about life um, of course he's not christian so he's very atheistic in his view but he brings out uh, some of my favorite philosophers and reflects so he's a runner he thinks about life he thinks about philosophy in the context of running he talks about martin heidegger uh, he says that Martin Heidegger brings out the whole power of concerning technology and how technology insists on its existence. For example, he talks about, Heidegger talks about, wow, we got this thing called um, hair dryer. I mean, he actually talks about that. He says that this new invention called hair dryer. And the hairdryer technology insists that we use it. And when he, Martin Heidegger dies, he says that after I die, make sure you publish this book. And he talks about doomsday. He said the end of the world is coming because of science. His argument is that it's not the science itself is evil, but that we give, humans give science complete godlike right to insist, force, uh, its way on us. And if you think about it, it is so true. ChatGPT came, no one dares to say, no, it's wrong. Or when iPhone came out, when iPad came out, when internet was, when, you know, blockchain came, no one stopped and said, no. Um, when new drug come out that kills people, then, then the government steps in and said, no. But when new technology come out, they said, no. It almost like has got life. Uh, privilege. So that's what Martin Heger is talking about. He says that we often think about what is the meaning and what is the value. 
Uh, and he insists that running to him is knowing the value and meaning of life. And he said that when he runs, Running itself, knowing running is equal to running because as he runs, the knowledge comes, the revelation comes. Wow. In that way, I said, yeah, me too. Uh, for me, running also, I mean, I finished 18 marathons, so I know. And I, I learned to run because I became so fat going to uh, Vietnam and I almost became 200 pounds. I told my church congregation that I'm going to run my half, a full marathon. That was January. And March was the full marathon, 26 miles. And everybody laughed, especially Jenny in the front row. said, ah, ha, ha, ha. Like, And they said, of all our marriage, I never saw you run. Why would you say that you want to run full marathon in three months? Well, I did. And so that's the first premises of his philosophy of running. Running is a challenge is that the core of running is to fulfill this element of challenge in life. And life is challenge, right? Um, he said, you need to start running. First step is the challenge to start. He says that running and life uh, is to pursue freedom. Chapter three, life and running the small change will be accumulated and create a big change. Fourth chapter, life and running. The premises, the basic thing is that it's a play. Chapter five, life and running. You need to focus on what is wrong. Chapter six, life and running itself is a goal. Life and running itself is a goal, not we are doing something for. Chapter seven, life and running is a continuation of choice. Chapter 8, which is a final chapter. Uh, when meaning and goal ends, it finally begins. Life and running. Wow. Um, he's uh, very, 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 very anti-God uh, in his writing. It's interesting how he brings out his, uh, his view especially about running he says that uh, religion the function of religion is continuously lying to people so that they'll feel good about themselves that he feels is the 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 purpose of religion so he sees whether buddhist or muslim or hindus or christians going to mosque temple or church is that well well they well they're going there to be lied to um Because he, he says that when you run, that you don't really need to be lied to because the reality running itself is in your face. He says that I run toward my old age. He talks about Spinoza um, and he talks about all these other philosophers and brings out Descartes, 17th century um, mathematician and philosopher Rene Descartes is the father of modern philosophy. Uh, he says that because of cogito ergo sum, I think therefore I am, he created this binary of physical and non-physical, right? Mm -hmm. And as a, as a rationalist, he says, yeah, that's what we do. Um, the second part, he says, it, there are a lot of stuff that he talked about, and he brings out uh, Wittgenstein. Oh, no, he talks about another existentialist or French existentialist talks about facticity of human. Facticity, uh, meaning that do not imply any more value than what is a fact. And it will be the existential facticity. Talks about how uh, the body has certain amount of fat, protein. And uh, when we talk about human, or when we talk about fact, when we talk about event, when we talk about anything, uh, talk about fact only. 
there's there's another existential way to approach, but that, that's not theistic existentialism. He says that our thought so at a certain point becomes meditation during running. Wow. And I said, yeah, I could identify with that. Both for me, both running and swimming is the same thing. I've been swimming hour a day and and it kind of kills me not that I cannot go out to swim right now. So I need to either run or ride bicycle because I just finished my first sprint size uh, triathlon. I swam 750 meters and rode bike 12 miles and then ran three miles. And that was really, really nice. So I'm going to uh, double that and do um, uh, Olympic size. Olympic size is mile swim, 20, 24 mile, no, yeah. 26 mile bike i think and then six mile run or 10 mile run or six mile run i think but they'll be really good but during the exercise during the rest or during practice of running and swimming you reach the certain stage where you your body your your brain relaxes and that's when revelation comes and he talks about that and i thought wow that's interesting um how even uh, scientifically you could prove that you reach certain stage in your running, right? Um, that you could reach that. Well, he was 23 when he graduated from Oxford. So he's no, no dummies. He's a smart guy. At 23, he finished Oxford and he came to, of all place, um, to America as a professor and he said his students were older than him at the time <laughs> and he went back to Ireland and he comes back again and he goes to uh, um, to Florida and he he says that of all the developed world America has the least amount of holidays he says that France has 10 day mandatory uh, must uh, vacation and 30 paid holidays brazil has 11 must holidays and 30 paid holidays Ritunia, philip uh, philan russia also have mandatory and 40-day paid vacation americans no why he says because america's built on consumerism he says that america worships work and refuse to play and i i i beg to differ i said no that's the misreading of america i think I think America work to play. Uh, you know, I think weekend warriors, you know, they work hard so that they could play hard, that they could buy more toys. But in his view, uh, he said that Americans missed it. You know, they don't know how to play. <laughs> there will be his bias against American. And he brings in Wittgenstein, a 20th century Aus Austria's philosopher, the logical positivist Wittgenstein, you know, I've been trying to read Wittgenstein. It's just crazy how hard it is. He said that Wittgenstein, according to him, because as a linguist, he said the, the word play, we cannot basically uh, make definition of play because it has to have certain commonality and special speciality for something to be defined, like swimming. Well, swimming, you have to be in the water and you have to go a certain distance, a certain form. So you could define swimming. But play, well, what is play? Everything applies. So, but the fact that running itself should be a play is very important because the joy of running, it just comes from the fact that you're mindlessly playing. You're not doing anything significant. You're not accomplishing anything. You're just playing. And if when running becomes your play, then you have reached that point. And he says something very interesting. He's also a writer. He's a write, he, he wrote books. He said, in that term, that the joy comes by both writing and to him running. And I said, hey, same thing here. Because to me, at this point, writing commentary has become just so much joy. It's not even work anymore. I just spent a couple hours uh, writing commentary on Song of Solomon. I'm not even writing creatively. I'm not even saying anything. I'm just 
putting it all together. I'm assembling a book right now to a point where just like my daughter at Trader Joe, she goes buy salad, buy all this food and dessert. And she kind of put it together, assemble it, microwave certain things, heat up certain thing and put a little decor and ta-da, dinner served. And she said, dinner served, dad. Well, I see you see two, you mix two kinds of salad here, you know, and I'm writing books like that. Hmm. And he basically um, talked about Tolstoy. And then he said he cannot believe Tolstoy brought faith into his life. And he is just totally anti-God, anti-faith, uh, that only people who really um, talk about faith or God is people who really do not know what's going on in life. <laughs> he says that all these people he meditate while he's running, Plato, Schopenhauer, Schopenhauer uh, Sartre, uh, Nietzsche, Heidegger, Aristotle, Descartes, uh, that he runs and meditate as he runs. And I said, man, I run and meditate on God's beautiful creation, the air, the birds, and the flowers, and I thank God. So same kind of activity, different kind of result. <laughs> Lord bless you. Go run. It's good for you. See you tomorrow.